Well, hello fellow Rainmakers and welcome to this edition of Rainmaker Briefing. The topic today is how to get more from your LinkedIn home feed. And uh, for those of you who are uh, regular users of LinkedIn, uh, you may be familiar with what's on the feed, but LinkedIn is changing on a fairly regular basis and adding new functionality. So what I wanted to do is just highlight some of the areas that I look at and give you a chance to say, well, okay, I didn't know that was existed or uh, I had some explanation around that. So hopefully I've, the next 10 minutes or so, you'll pick up some, some thoughts and be able to go back to your LinkedIn home feed and use that in a more uh, effective, powerful way. So I'm gonna move this onto a screen share and uh, all being well, you'll then be able to uh, see my LinkedIn screen. So this is my LinkedIn home screen. So it's a live demonstration, so I've not been able to set any of this up uh, beforehand because obviously changes would have been uh, activated. I wouldn't be able to show you what I'd previously done. But before I get onto the, uh, the screen itself, uh, the home screen, this is typically the third or fourth thing I would go into. So when I log into LinkedIn, I would check notifications to see if there's anything I've done previously that has been responded to. If there are things that uh, discussions that are ongoing or um, activities from LinkedIn, I'd start off with that. I'd also check messages to see if there's a dialogue going through, if I've been uh, approached by anybody. I'd also check my network. So when I log in, those are the three things I check initially before going to my home screen. So navigating around this, particularly key to, to draw your attention to the search buttons at the top here, or the, the, the filter button here. At the moment, it's showing top posts. So these are geared around um, the engagement that people have had with it. So um, now particularly around, uh, around this, I think uh, to, to, to make the point that the, what you see on your home screen, home feed has been selected for you by LinkedIn and by the algorithm. So uh, there is a must be a very complicated system that decides what goes on to our, our home feed. And uh, LinkedIn do not publish uh, what that algorithm is and it changes on a regular basis. So there have been times when uh, I've looked again after uh, you know, the change has gone through and it's a, it's a different set of um, content up there. So I'll give you some guidance on this uh, and it may well change by the time you're uh, for you and by the time you're reading this, you're watching this. So particularly around here, I would see that it's being fed by the algorithms taking information from the people who we're connected with, the companies we're following, the groups we're part of, and the interests that we have, as in the influencers that we're following. And in some way, it's mashing those up into this feed. But more particularly, I think the overriding influence of what's on that home feed is what we have interacted with recently. So if we've liked or commented on something, I'd say that is a very strong indicator to LinkedIn's algorithm that that's what we want to get and that's what we get more of. So the first part is consciously think about what you're interacting with. Is that something that you have a deliberate purpose for interacting with? Is it a person you want to interact with? Is it a trusted source that you want to share and comment on to? And if you're doing more deliberately to interact with the quality that you want that reflects your brand that's what you'll get and that's what you'll be sharing if you're interacting with more that is uh, off off topic into uh, various areas then that's likely to end up with not only if you're sharing it you're putting out a mixed message to your audience but also to cloud the content that LinkedIn is then sending through to you thereafter so that said, we're looking at a, a, a top filter at the moment. So Inga, one of my inner circle here, I'm seeing a lot of her information because I'm interacting with her a lot. Then we have a promoted post from LinkedIn. Uh, this one is being come, come out because Jeff Molander has commented on it. It's actually originated from a second contact. So Jeff is somebody I've uh, interacted with a lot recently, and that's his comment. So I may well read that. Uh, Andy Metcalf has liked this from Phil. Um, so these are sort of reasons why things are coming through for me. Mark Williams has put something up there about LinkedIn. 
this is I know I know Frank um, but Tom and Tony Bradshaw have commented on that so there's a reasons why I'm seeing that and then we get to another promoted one and uh, there's an algorithm there that's promoting things to me based on my interest profile and, and so it goes on maybe also worth looking at the type of posts that are coming through here a lot of these are discussion type posts the first well, the impact here is the headshot is that headshot engaging when i hover over it i can see more of the, the detail of that uh, their headline is then visible and the relationship i have with them so we've got 13 shared connectors and these are the people who we share i have the option to connect with them at this stage and i can see from the uh, the brown there that he is on some form of premium version of linkedin so as we go through here i can see what's coming through and as I scroll through each of these, it's my understanding that the content is now getting a, if you like, a click or a view re referring back to the author of that content. So when you see the number of um, stats on how many people have viewed the content, as I'm going through this, each scroll past is picked up as a view. So there's a quick uh, highlight on that feed. And bear in mind, I said that that was in a top popularity sequence. Pop on that, you can go for the recent sequence. So these are you know, one minute ago. Mm. This post was a while ago, but I guess Graham Appleyard has only just commented onto it. Uh, this is 15 minutes ago, uh, promoted. Uh, somebody's commented on it very recently. So this is a very, very current content so that's the highlights of the feed there as it stands at the moment and have the option then to like and comment and share as i go through that so i won't go through examples of that at this stage but in terms of what drives or what influences what linkedin is picking up beyond the what we're interacting with on that a lot of it's driven down by what's on the bottom left hand corner here so these are groups and hashtags i've done interacted with locally uh, recently rather so groups i'm part of uh, an event from a while ago and some other hashtags but the key here i'd say is use that discover more to then go into uh, what's driving that so this is the option then to get into uh, a view of what's behind here now I can then choose to, this is likely to be all of the um, all of the things so LinkedIn is recommending other hashtags to follow but before we do that before we follow the recommend recommended let's look at the uh, people I follow as a starting point so here these are people who are when we connect with somebody then we are following each other under this language if i'm not connected with somebody because they're an influencer i can choose to follow them and therefore i'm one of i don't know two and a half million people who are following tim ferris we see on this screen here the number of posts that people have put up so 93 posts in a week 41 posts in a week so these are quite prolific publishers authors or they are sharing um, or putting a uh, quick sort of two, line or two introduction to something from somebody else some relevant piece of content that they've got from elsewhere but you'll see that these are fairly active but in fairness I'm not my feed isn't being cluttered by Anthony James and Alessio and Tim because I'm not interacting with them LinkedIn isn't showing me their content so in some ways this is a little bit redundant um, but it may be other other factors that are being used by the algorithm to bring these to my attention it may also be that the recommendations of other things I should follow are being steered by this profile this this set of people here so that's the followers side 
um, on a larger screen, there was a filter on the right hand side here, the sort of uh, three horizontal lollipop filter. I'm not seeing it on a, on a scroll, small screen at the moment though. Look at groups. These are groups that I'm part of. And I can see the number of members of those groups. Uh, I can't see any activity uh, stats and so on in there. But that's just a way of getting in and saying, actually, I don't, I don't need to be part of that group any longer. So you could dip in there and, and remove some of those groups if they're not relevant any longer. Uh, pages are those company pages, or used to be called company pages that I'm following now, sort of for any organization. That's a way of putting up um, a prospect list, as it were. If you're trying to keep in touch with companies, then following the page is a, an easy-ish way of saying, okay, I potentially would like to see more information from these companies and maybe go back into here on a more specific basis to say, okay, company by company, what have they published recently? Is there then something I can pick up on as a news piece? And that um, is a sort of light touch version of what you get in Sales Navigator, where you can add companies to your account list and then go through more specifically in that way. But again, 402 companies I'm following is more than I would uh, choose at this stage. So I need to go through and do some cleaning up on that list. And the hashtags. If you're not familiar with hashtags, these are uh, a way of a thread of content being gathered together. And therefore, we can follow related content based on those hashtags. And also, when we create content, we can be deliberate about hashtagging or adding two or three hashtags to the content so that we um, we put our content into those feeds. So some of the posts I put up recently have got to the point of being trending in certain hashtag topics. So I think that's quite a quite an achievement having a, got over a thousand views on some of the recent um, recent uh, posts. They've then come through as, as trending. So at that point, LinkedIn is then going to give an acceleration, and, uh, an extra visibility to more people based on that. So there's the hashtags and clear out some of those, remove some that are no longer relevant, uh, just to sharpen up, not just what I'm receiving, but what I'm telling LinkedIn and the algorithm about what I'm interested to receive. So there's those four areas there I'd suggest doing some housekeeping on. Coming back to the profile itself, I look at my, um, my own profile. Way down the bottom, there's an interests category. So interests, some of the things I'm following are likely to be coming through in that interests area. So I would uh, suggest keep an eye, an eye on what's being followed particularly for those who are following things that maybe are more recruitment line. So do you want to have a, a bias of, of, of recruiters in your interest area that's visible in this? In this? I suggest that you need to keep that reasonably tidy. What is it projecting for those who delve deep in your, uh, in your profile? And I suggest there that, um, just, to, just to quickly summarize then, um, going into LinkedIn first thing, first thing uh, in the morning or maybe lunchtime or three, three times a day if, you, if that's what you do. Check for notifications, messages and invites that you've um, either received or been accepted that you've sent out. Then look at your home feed and comment, like and otherwise with a sort of deliberate mindset there. What, am I send, what messages am I sending out? What am I telling LinkedIn's algorithm about what I'm interested in? Do some periodic housekeeping on those areas of the people, the companies, the groups, the hashtags and so on, just to keep that uh, feed up to date. So, so the, the instructions to LinkedIn up to date. One other thing to mention actually, as I go through here, when you see posts on here, you'll see a uh, three dots here. If you hover over or click on the three dots, you then got a bunch of options here. You can save a post for reading later, send it to somebody else in a private message, 
copy a link. I tend to do this quite a lot with some of the posts that I've put up, find the post again and copy and put it into an email to somebody uh, with a sort of here, read this, you know, following our discussion. You could embed that in a post in your website. Um, you can hide it and that's where you're starting to get to tuning out of people who are putting too much in your feed or the wrong topic or the wrong message or so on. So you can hide a post, particularly if that is getting an active discussion. I could unfollow Matthew, so we're still connected, but I don't want to see his content any longer. If it's offensive, I could report it. And then this moves into the area I've just shown, which is the um, uh, choosing to add or, or delete different, uh, different areas. And the who can see the post is usually set down to everybody. There's only fine tuning on that. Um, so I encourage you to spend a little bit of time, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, going through and tidying up your um, the comments that are your, your, your settings there within the um, uh, group's interests and so on. And also be more deliberate about what you're liking and commenting on in your home feed. So I hope that's been helpful to you. And uh, if you've got any questions, then drop me an email. And uh, part of what I do is help people to understand LinkedIn and use it better, and particularly get to the point where they are generating more conversations, starting more sales conversations through LinkedIn. So uh, this is Mark Stonham for the Rainmaker Briefings, uh, wishing you a very successful day. Thank you.